Thank you, Helen. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Sungal. Um, my topic today is mapping human mobility and close contacts for the geospatial modeling COVID-19 spread. Um, this is a joint work uh, with my colleagues, uh, with Ching Li from mathematics, Kai Bing Chen from life science communication, and Johnson Pads from public health. So all of us are uh, at the UW Medicine and funded by NSF uh, as a social and behavioral science. So this is a uh, different aspect uh, that are very relevant to previous talks. And for us, at the beginning, during the pandemic, you know, um, first thing we are interested to look at the, how different uh, community neighborhoods uh, responded to the uh, stay at home or safer at home orders. So by tracking the mobility patterns, as you can see from the dashboard. And if it is a, if the color shoes blue, mean that uh, on particular day on particular county, there is a reduced mobility measured by the median or the individual maximum distance and the red color uh, shows the increased mobility. Um, by tracking the mobility patterns, we can further associate the mobility pattern with uh, uh, COVID-19 confirmed case growth rate. And what we found was that uh, there exists a statistic significant association uh, regarding the mobility pattern and then the COVID-19 infection rate, uh, although with some temporal lag. And uh, if we compare the before stay at home and after stay at home order, uh, we found that the doubling time, uh, you know, uh, increase, which also shows the effectiveness of the uh, stay at home orders. And then uh, in order to do the modeling, uh, one critical data set uh, was missing from the open, you know, mobility data set is about the travel flows between different places. So this is why uh, we collaborated with SafeGraph and to aggregate uh, the anonymized uh, mobile phone data and to provide the state to state and county to county and also the track to track spatial interaction flow data set. And this is an open data repository available on, on GitHub. And we still maintain the uh, weekly updates, but the resolution is daily updates. And if people are interested, you can still incorporate this data set into your research. And at the local level, uh, in addition to the travel distance and then the stay at home time, we also utilize uh, individual level mobile phone data to measure the close contacts information as a proxy, uh, you know, uh, whether uh, they are pro event. Uh, as you can see on the map, this is uh, uh, around our University of Wisconsin Madison campus area, also the downtown of Madison. And as we know, uh, there was a surge uh, in last summer uh, when we uh, when our campus uh, reopens. So this is why we uh, hope to utilize such a, you know, mobile phone tracking uh, platform to understand, you know, whether people have some gathering events. And as you can see from the map, we measure at the specific uh, sensor tracked block groups and the darker the color is, and then the higher of the close contact is, mean that there might exist some sort of, you know, gathering. So this is as a proxy and to inform some of the local decision making. And utilizing the mobility and then the close contact information, uh, we further build the mobility augmented uh, uh, traditional you know, SER or epidemic model to understand the geospatial uh, spread of the disease. And one innovation of our model was that we specifically take the spatial interaction we mentioned earlier into the, uh, you know, this compartment modeling effort and to consider the impact of the you know, interstate uh, travels. And so we evaluate three specific measures, uh, travel flow restriction, the uh, testing or reporting rate, and the social distancing um, you know, um, uh, policy, uh, which is directly uh, linking to the transmission rate. And so what we found was that actually um, the travel flow restriction uh, you know, in regarding the impact is not as, you know, important as, uh, you know, social distancing and also the testing and reporting rate. At the beginning of the March 2020, uh, in the U.S. average, uh, there are only about 22% uh, of the confirmed cases has been reported based on our modeling effort. So as I show you in the uh, plot on the right, uh, we also quantify the impact of the timely quarantine and isolation of the infected cases. And the uh, X uh, access to the delay in time or days 
and the why should the log logarithm of the set that of people. So you can see that on some state at that time, like New York and Michigan, if the you know infected cases not isolated or quarantined uh, in you know about two days, then uh, the majority of people in these two states will be you know uh, you know largely infected. So again, to show the important importance of the timely uh, quarantine and isolation. So finally, uh, at the inter-county level, we also take the spatial heterogeneity into consideration in our modeling effort. Specifically, this is a two typical counties in the Wisconsin. So the Dane County, as we know, there is a large uh, age structure in the heterogeneity because of the existence of their university and versus Milwaukee County, uh, we know that Milwaukee is one of the most, uh, you know, segregated uh, metropolitan area in the U.S. So there is a large, um, you know, race and ethnicity uh, heterogeneity. So this is why if we compare the, you know, COVID-19 infection rate versus the spatial heterogeneity of the race and age structure, uh, we can find the uh, actually correlate with the infection um, case. Um, you know, very well. So again, we try to use different demographics to explain the spatial heterogeneity uh, of the COVID-19 spread. So that's all for my presentation. Thank you for your attention.